In today's video, I'll be giving you my second and final Seattle Seahawks 2024-7 round mock draft. We will have trades in this this time. I'm not sure if we did in the first one, but we have trades in it this time. We have a total of one trade, and it's probably one of the most obvious trades. And I have to emphasize this every time I make mock draft. I don't watch college football. I try so hard to get into it. I just can't, though. Plus, I'm a Washington State Cougars fan. There's nothing excited when it comes to watching college football if you're a Cougars fan. But anyways, I do it because it's draft season. I do it because even though I don't know what I'm talking about, I have fun doing it. I have fun learning all these players. I've been watching a little bit of film here and there. I've also just been listening to like other Seahawks fans and get their opinions on what we should do but as always as well both my socials are linked in the bio instagram and tiktok anyways let's get into the mock draft Alright, before I go over the picks, I will run down the trade. So I acquired pick 24, 56, and an additional 2025 20, fourth round pick from the Dallas Cowboys. Just in exchange for the 16th overall pick. Seems like the most ideal trade to me, especially on the site that I use, NFLMockDraftDatabase.com. Pick 24, Layatu Latu, edge rusher, UCLA. Latu plays with a special level of maturity that you typically see in former NFL players or current NFL veteran players. As a run defender, he almost never stays blocked by tackles and is the best at blocking tight ends at the collegiate level. He has a very instinctive and well thought out pass rushing strategy and he excels at seizing control of the rep through using quick hands and sneaky angles to take advantage of openings. Pick 56, Chris Jenkins, defensive line, Michigan. Jenkins plays with good strength and one-on-one -on -one power swaps despite having a smaller build for his position. He is able to neutralize single blocks, but when he gets double teams, he finds it difficult to widen his gap. But his engine never shuts off, and by the end of the play, he's usually chasing quarterbacks and running down ball carriers. Pick 81. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker, Clemson. Trotter is a man with NFL lineage who plays with strength, consistency, and an ability to put in extra effort. In order to get to the rock and play about with bodies, he moves with remarkable body control and footwork and analyzes problems quickly. Although he isn't very large or long, his football skills negates this notion. He can really get to the quarterback as a blitzer and has good short area burst in addition to solid pursuit speed. With his above average efficiency and strong vision, Trotter can reach the ball quickly and could end up being a regular starter in the National Football League. Pick 102, Christian Mahogany, offensive lineman, Boston College. Large and strong, but without having the leverage or body control to play a more reliable brand of football. Due to bad posture and sloppy technique, Mahogany's early video was extremely problematic. However, he performed a self-correction in the middle of the season that resulted in better tape later in the campaign. His hand usage and punching power are good, but he does lack the short area mobility to be a reliable pass protector against NFL sub packages. Mahogany is a downhill mauler who needs to keep improving his craft and playing for a team that knows how important it is to have big power guys and lets them do what they do best, run the game. Early on into his career, he has the potential to be a reliable backup and a high low end starter in the NFL. Pick 118, James Williams, safety, Miami. Williams has a long, athletic body and is a physical safety. Watching him rush and strike from high safety is entertaining, but witnessing his coverage confusion is far less entertaining. Although his current level of clarity in the game may not satisfy clubs, his athleticism and coverability allow him to choose the windows on tight ends and man coverage. 
William's skills and playing style should land him a position as a nickel linebacker or box safety, but it may take him a year or two to put on some weight and work on his craft. Pick 179, Jaheim Bell, tight end, Florida State. Undersized as a tight end and lacking instincts as a lead blocker out of the backfield, Bell is a player without a clean positional fit after playing all over the field at South Carolina and Florida State. But when Bell centers in and locks up, he can be an effective blocker, but he is wildly inconsistent when asked to make blocks on the move in space. He's tight-hipped, but he does have the speed to run the scenes and is a talented runner after the catch. Pick 192, Chow Smith Wade, cornerback, Washington State. Obviously had to get one of my boys in here again. Smith Wade is a little cornerback who possesses quickness and agility, who can play man or zone coverage. His weight and height are below the ideal NFL standard for an outside cornerback, which may affect his draft positioning. When he gets into the receiver's face, Smith Wade is a sticky man cover corner with a closing burst that can make up for distance lost. In zone coverage, he can be in a feast or fasting situation since he frequently tries to jump short throws and neglect his deep cover duties. Because of his athleticism, ball abilities, and competitive nature, he may wind up surpassing his draft position. And the final pick, 235, Jordan Jefferson, defensive line, LSU. Jefferson has a rather sturdy upper body and a balanced frame. His performance versus Alabama, though, was disappointing since the size and strength of the Crimson Tide frequently overpowered him at the point of attack. His first step quickness and ability to shoot into the backfield as a run play disruptor, however, is difficult to overlook. Teams will have to put in the time to strengthen him and polish his take on style. For one gap clubs willing to invest in his development, he may be worth a draft pick and stash. Well, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. And turn the notification bell on so you'll never miss an upload. I will see you in the next video. Go Hawks!